There you are, sitting on your couch watching a movie when suddenly you decide you want popcorn. So you get up and cross the room to the kitchen, but the moment you cross the threshold between the two rooms, bam, you suddenly stop in your tracks, you glance about the kitchen in confusion like Gandalf in the Mines of Moria, unable to remember why you came here in the first place. Your mind is a blank, wiped clean. I'm no member of this place. You return to the living room, resume your movie, and bam, it all comes back to you as if nothing happened. You get up again, and the whole cycle begins anew. If this has ever happened to you, then don't worry, you aren't going crazy or suffering from early onset dementia, or if you are, don't worry about it, soon you won't remember you can't remember anyway. But what is happening here? What is it about walking through a doorway that prompts our brains to suddenly erase our short-term memory? Well, sit back, keep your gray matter focused, and let's dive into the fascinating science behind the doorway effect. Just before we get back to today's video, just wanted to say a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Belessa, who are currently giving away free toys and gift cards to literally everyone who signs up to my giveaway. What? Can you believe it? Link below. For those unfamiliar, Belessa's products are designed with quality and ease of use in mind with a general goal to help everyone feel empowered, confident, and comfortable exploring their spicy side. There are wind chimes where my ding dong should be. I can work with that. Towards this end, Belessa has got great premium product for everyone, including a slew of items for the ladies out there. Oh, it's a lady. But as our audience skews more towards those packing boy bits, they sent over a handful to show off. Toys, not boy bits. Including the ever popular Blow Pro and the Ultra Blow, the former featuring vibration, thrusting, and rotation with multiple adjustable modes on it all, and ultra lifelike feel. The latter Ultra Blow likewise is designed for maximum lifelike feel. Maximum daring. Tacked on with eight dynamic modes and simple intuitive controls to easily make sure it's doing exactly what you want, when you want it. If you're looking for something a bit more discreet and to spice up date night with the misses, they also have the Key Vibe, which is a small but powerful, quiet, velvety soft silicone vibrator that uses a strong magnet to clip to underwear to stay put as you have a fun night out. Magnets, how do they work? The Key Vibe's remote control is designed to be indistinguishable from a remote car key to keep it subtle enough that no one would think anything of it if left out. Or for easy activation of the key vibe anytime, even while having dinner out without anyone being the wiser. Uh oh, I hear wind chimes. Look away. Everybody look away. Again, Belessa has tons of premium product for everyone, no matter what bits you've got. They make a great gift during the holidays for your partner, and once again, right now, Belessa is giving away free toys or gift cards to literally everyone who signs up to my giveaway with at Belessa Co. Just check the link in the description and the pinned comment. Don't mind if I do. A huge thank you to Belessa for partnering with us. Now let's get back to today's video. While our day-to-day -day consciousness may appear like a continuous experience, only interrupted by a few hours of unconsciousness when we go to sleep every night, this is not, in fact, how we process reality. We're constantly bombarded with so much sensory information from second to second that our brains must work overtime to sift out and condense only the most relevant information to prevent us from becoming completely overwhelmed. One way our brains do this is by combining various events, sensations, and other details into self-contained episodes, a birthday party, a wedding, a business meeting, etc. This process is known creatively as episodic memory, and along with semantic memory, conscious knowledge of specific facts and concepts, makes up one half of what is known as explicit memory. This is contrasted with implicit memory, which in the form of procedural memory allows us to perform various learned tasks, for example, riding a bike, driving a car, tying one's shoe, or pronouncing the words in one's mother tongue, all without conscious effort. The separation between these two types of memory is dramatically demonstrated by studies conducted on patients with amnesia who, despite having no explicit memory of facts, their own names or childhoods, or even what happened one minute ago in some cases, can still easily perform implicit memory tasks learned before they developed amnesia. Episodic and semantic memory are intimately tied to our environment, with our brains constantly taking cues from our surroundings in order to filter and integrate events and concepts. For this reason, information learned in a given environment is often best remembered in that same environment. So, pro tip for all you students out there, if you want to do especially well on your exams, try studying in the same classroom or hall where these exams will be held. This same fact is often exploited by mnemonicists or memory experts. For example, in the Mind Palace technique, the mnemonicist imagines walking through a hypothetical space with particular pieces of information being tied to various objects, such as pieces of furniture, pictures, etc. As a result of these processes, episodic memories are divided by what are known as event boundaries 
boundaries. These boundaries can be literal, for example, moving from one room to another, or conceptual, such as recalling a certain past event or switching emotional states. Indeed, our natural ability to break up the continuous flow of reality into discrete, often discontinuous episodes is one of the reasons that cinema is so psychologically and emotionally effective. Film editing mimics how we perceive reality, allowing us to fill in the blanks between scenes and perceive the entire movie as one continuous narrative. According to one theory of the doorway effect, crossing an event boundary causes the brain to shift from one event model to the other via the so-called location updating effect. For example, in the scenario presented at the start of this video, the idea of making popcorn is linked to one side of the event boundary, sitting on the couch watching a movie, while crossing that boundary into the kitchen results in that idea being discarded in favor of new ideas associated with the new location. It should be noted here that there are two subtly different variations on this concept, one in which the brain pulls on specific memory cues in the environment, and one in which it instead considers the entire event model as a whole. By contrast, a competing theory, known as event cognition, offers an alternative explanation. According to this theory, crossing an event boundary from one context to another presents the brain with a flood of new information which it must quickly absorb and process. To accomplish this more efficiently and avoid becoming overwhelmed, the brain jettisons or suppresses many of the memories and ideas associated with the previous context, making them less available for immediate recall. But which of these equally plausible theories is the correct one? As in all science, a theory is useless without observational or experimental evidence. Thankfully, however, quite a bit of research has been done to shed some light on this curious but familiar psychological phenomenon. For example, in a 2006 study, researchers Gabriel Radvansky and David Copeland of the Department of Psychology at the University of Notre Dame used the Valve Hammer Game engine to create a virtual environment comprising 66 different rooms, identical in shape and size but with different patterns on the walls and different door locations. Each room featured a table holding one of six 3D objects, a cube, a wedge, a pole, a disc, a cross, and a cone in 10 different colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, white, gray, brown, and black. In the first of two experiments, 30 participants, half male and half female, were seated in front of a large 66 inch screen and instructed to transfer the various 3D objects from one virtual room to another. Each object disappeared when removed from the table and reappeared when set down. After setting down the object from room 1 in room 2, the participants would pick up the room 2 object and carry it to room 3, and so on. At various points during this process, the participants were subjected to a memory probe trial in which the name of an object, i.e. red cube, was verbally presented. The participants were then asked to answer yes if the object matched the one they were carrying or had just set down, or no if it did not. These trials were conducted either before the participant left one room, the so-called no-shift condition, or just after they had crossed a doorway into the next room, the shift condition. They were also conducted at random intervals to prevent participants from anticipating the trials and consciously attempting to remember the object they were carrying. The second experiment was similar to the first but involved rooms of different sizes or lighting arrangements with walls and doorways being virtually altered in order to keep the distance traveled between rooms consistent and allow the effects of space, distance, wall pattern, lighting, etc. to be isolated from one another. So what happened? The results of these experiments seem to support the location updating theory. Not only were subjects far more likely to forget an object when probed after passing through a doorway than when simply crossing a room, no matter how large said room happened to be or how it was patterned or lit, but they were more likely to forget an object they had just set down, a disassociated object, than one they were carrying, an associated object. Still, as the researchers themselves acknowledge, the 2006 study suffered from a number of shortcomings that left certain aspects of the doorway effect ambiguous. They state, although people saw images of objects, verbal probes were used. These probes were not well integrated with the experienced visual spatial context. There was a mismatch of probe and target such as that observed with transfer appropriate processing. Inconsistencies between how information is encoded and retrieved can hinder memory, opening a window to further disruptions, such as those produced by location updating. Similarly, in a study in 2009, people were probed for objects seen in films, for objects that were relevant across event boundary, as are probed for objects were, and that were actually fixated during film viewing. 
They found poor memory followed an event shift when the task emphasized conceptual qualities. For example, did you see a spatula or a pot? But not when the task emphasized perceptual qualities. For example, which of the two pots did you see? Thus, location updating may be disruptive when the probe task emphasizes conceptual qualities, for example, using verbal labels of seen objects, but not when it emphasizes perceptual qualities, for example, using pictures of objects. As a result, in 2010, Radvansky, along with Andrea Tamblin and Sabine Krawitz, performed an updated version of the 2006 study in order to address these and other methodological gaps. As in the earlier study, two separate experiments were performed. In the first experiment, half of the 49 participants were given verbal memory probes as before, while the other half were presented with on-screen images of the objects. The equipment used in the experiment was also upgraded for enhanced immersion. Participants were placed in a darkened room, given a joystick instead of a mouse and keyboard to navigate the virtual environment, and fitted with headphones so they could hear their own simulated footsteps. Otherwise, the testing procedure was largely identical to the previous study. The results of this experiment revealed a statistically insignificant difference in memory performance between subjects probed verbally and those probed visually, as well as between earlier participants who used a mouse and keyboard to navigate the virtual environment and later ones who used a joystick. The researchers speculated that updating an event model following a location shift disrupts memory for information associated with a prior location, the objects in the previous room, even if it continues to be task relevant. How the information is probed for, whether verbal or visual, would be of minor consequence. Moving on from there, a 2011 study conducted by the same team using much smaller 17-inch monitors also found that the degree of participant immersion had no significant effect on object recall, though participants did respond to memory probes an average of 358 milliseconds faster than in previous studies, an effect that researchers attributed to the smaller screen placing less cognitive load on the brain. The the second experiment of the 2010 study sought to determine if disassociating memory tasks from participants' physical, or in this case virtual, environment would have any impact on the strength of the location updating effect. Towards this end, in addition to being questioned about the objects they were carrying, the 40 participants were made to memorize and recall a number of word pairs such as ethnic cake, chief cuff, and north lamp, the combinations being made deliberately random to prevent participants from memorizing them by association. As with the virtual objects, positive and negative memory probes for these word pairs were presented at random, either while participants were crossing a virtual room and after they had crossed a doorway into the next room, that is, in the shift and non-shift conditions. The second experiment found that the location updating effect was just as strong for the word pairs as for the virtual objects, supporting the view that, to quote, most of what a person is attending to becomes less available following an event boundary as the event model is updated. In summary, walking through doorways reduces the availability of information in memory. This is relatively unaffected by the degree of integration of the information with the surrounding environmental context. Movement from one location to another disrupts cognition. Still a number of questions remained. For example, is the location updating effect as strong in real versus virtual environments? As the researchers themselves later stated, real experiences are considered non-mediated, while virtual environments might lack cues that real settings offer for accurate performance. Previous evidence suggests that virtual environments can lead to cognitive deficits tied to their impoverished nature relative to real environments. The study speculated that the scarcity of spatial cues in virtual environments might explain why location shifts are more disruptive. However, according to an event cognition perspective, the need to monitor and update an event model should apply to real situations as well. Furthermore, the researchers wanted to investigate an alternative explanation for the location updating effect, which suggests that forgetting might arise due to differences in environmental context during retrieval compared to encoding. Different rooms could serve as distinct contexts, potentially leading to poorer memory retrieval when the context differs. In order to explore these questions, the second experiment of the Notre Dame team's 2011 study transposed the methodology of the 2006 and 2010 studies to a real-world environment using three connected university offices, six different colored objects, 60 participants, and 12 memory probes. Meanwhile, the third experiment was conducted virtually using the same screen and joystick setup as the 2006 and 2010 studies, only this time the 48 participants were made to return to the original 
original room where they had first picked up an object before being probed. They were also subjected to a double shift condition where they transitioned through two rooms without dropping the object before being probed. The second experiment revealed no significant difference in the strength of the location updating effect between the virtual and physical environments, discounting the idea that the sparse or uncanny nature of virtual environments plays a significant role in the doorway effect. More surprisingly, however, the third experiment revealed no significant improvement in recall when participants returned to the room from which they had originally picked up a given object. This strongly suggests that the doorway effect does not result from the brain suddenly losing environmental memory cues, but rather from a total shift in event model that cannot be quickly reset even by returning to the original environment. But while Radvansky and his team's papers are by far the most well-known and off-cited studies on the doorway effect, more recently other researchers have called their results into question. For example, in 2021, Jessica McFadden, Christopher Nolan, no, not that Christopher Nolan, Ellen Pinocchi, David Butler, and Oliver Bauman of Bond University in Robinia, Australia, recreated several of Radvansky and his team's experiments using both physical and virtual environments, the latter presented via virtual reality on VR goggles. To the researchers' surprise, participants exhibited almost none of the short-term memory loss observed in previous studies. As Dr. Oliver Bauman later stated in an interview, at first we couldn't find the doorway effect at all, so we thought maybe people were too good, they were remembering everything. It was only when the researchers increased the participants' cognitive load that they finally started to forget. So then we made it more difficult and got them to do backwards counting tasks while moving around to load up their working memory. Forgetting did now occur, telling us that overloading the participants' memory made them more susceptible to the effect of the doorway. In other words, the doorway effect only occurs if we are cognitively in a vulnerable state. Significantly, this cognitive overload created a large number of positive results, that is, false memories, but hardly any negative results, that is, outright forgetting. So what is going on here? Why did the doorway effect suddenly disappear in the Bond University study when it appeared so prominently in the Notre Dame experiments? Dr. Bauman speculates that the discrepancy stems from a simple but fundamental difference in methodology. In our experiments, the rooms were designed to be visually identical. There was no change of context happening when crossing a doorway, as with the case in the previous studies. This suggests that, despite its name, the doorway effect is not caused by a doorway per se, but the transition between significantly different environments. A good example is moving around in a department store. Taking the elevator between retail levels may have no effect on our memory, but moving from retail to the car park might cause us to forget something that we need to buy. Overall, episodic memory gives us greater capacity than if you have just one gigantic workspace where everything is connected, but there is a cost to that. By transitioning between compartments, we can lose things. As for why the strange brain glitch exists in the first place, the Bond University paper speculates that it might actually be a useful cognitive adaptation. The underlying cause of the location updating effect is thought to relate to temporal prediction such that the contents of working memory acquired while in one event is highly predictive while still in that event and lowly predictive of any upcoming new event which will have its own new set of statistical regularities. Hence the information is cleared from working memory when the event boundary is crossed. At the same time, the doorway effect may have negative effects beyond occasionally losing one's train of thought. For example, some education specialists have speculated that students moving from one classroom to another might cause them to temporarily forget what they were just learning, impacting long-term retention and the integration of different ideas. Thankfully, however, the doorway effect is easily overcome. As Dr. Bauman reassures us, if we are single-minded in what we want to do, nothing will stop us remembering. But if we have multiple things going on, forgetfulness becomes noticeable.